Mr. Acting President, one of your big challenges as well is to try to re-energize the peace process, the amnesty process, in, in fact, your homeland, isn't it? The Niger Delta area. Exactly. So there was a whole system set in place, but it seems to be fraying, and there's a lot of concern, particularly given how vital it is as an oil-producing part of the world. What are you going to do about that? Well, the amnesty process is on cause. Uh, what happened is that people don't really understand the total concept of the amnesty. The amnesty is divided into three phases. The disarmament phase, that is the phase where the militants surrender their weapons. Then rehabilitation phase and reintegration phase. Some of these uh, militants have been in that armed struggle for a very long time. And when young people are involved in carrying weapons against the state for a very long time. There is the tendency for them to go into some forms of aberration in their behavior. Maybe take to excessive alcohol, or some of them may even take other things. That go. So you have a process that you must follow. After the disarmament, the next is uh, rehabilitation. You have to rehabilitate them. Then you have to properly integrate them into the society. So during the process of rehabilitation, you must reorientate their thinking and make them to learn some skills that will enable them earn a decent living through the re, uh, proper reintegration process. But now we are trying to make the best. Up to this time, we have not gotten the kind of standard rehabilitation camps we were expecting. So, but now we want to treat them in batches. We have an special advisor on Niger Delta. Before the Minister of Defense, who handled the disarmament, was also coordinating the rehabilitation. And that was giving us a lot of problems. But now we have removed the rehabilitation. The disarmament was a military exercise. So the military of defense has finished with that. So the case of rehabilitation and reintegration is now moved into the hands of the special advisor to the president on the Niger Delta. We have a good program. So for the first batch of trainees, about 1,600 um, 1, or so, are going to move to their camps in the, uh, in the Cross River State by the third week of April. So we have to do them in batches. The total number of militants that surrendered weapons are 20,191 or so, but at least a little more than 20,100 and something. Either. So it's, it's, it's a lot of youth, and it's not easy to manage such number of people. What about Jos, which we just saw an explosion of violence there between Muslim and Christian? What can you do about that? No, 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 no. It's not a problem between Muslim and Christians. That is quite a wrong issue. I mean, the problem of Jos is it, they just occupy a plateau, quite a high land area in, uh, in Nigeria. And that's an area where a number of uh, uh, people settle outside the indigenous population. In fact, uh, even when Lagos was the federal capital territory, most, uh, most uh, Europeans who came to Nigeria then prefer to stay in Jos. Because of the elevation, the temperature is very low. It's like a sub-temperate sub temperate climate, where the temperature sometimes could drop up to minus two. No part of Nigeria that experienced that. No, Nigeria is a typical tropical country. But because of that, Tem uh, tem uh, climate and the mining of tin and others started within that area. So there's a lot of settlers from the southeastern part of Nigeria, from the southwestern part of Nigeria, and from the extreme north. So most of these uh, settlers now play big in the economy, the local economy. So the indigenous population feel that they have been excluded from the economy, and that has been bringing conflict from the early 60s. But what can you do about it? Of course, we have set up different. In terms of what we are doing, we are discussing with the, uh, the traditional rulers, we are discussing with religious leaders, we are discussing with opinion leaders. That is to appeal to them, and they are responding. Of course, we are also providing security. Because first of all, you must provide adequate security to make sure that people don't carry weapons and intimidate or kill others. So that is being done. Then we are also appealing to their conscience, using their leaders, both uh, the opinion leaders, both uh, the religious leaders, both uh, traditional leaders, and it is paying off. It is paying off? Yes. You think that kind of violence will stop? No, it is paying off. I cannot say it will stop completely, 
But we, our commitment is to make sure that it stops. With issues like Joss or the Niger Delta, with the fact that, as you've mentioned yourself, there's a severe power and electricity crisis and all sorts of other issues, how do you make international investors feel confident? Even kidnappings there are, as you've said yourself, need to stop. Yes, Nigeria is a very big country, and some of these uh, uh, issues people raise in the media that makes it look as if the whole country is red. It is not quite so. You have a lot of international investors in Nigeria as we are talking. Right. Even in the Niger Delta, you have the oil companies and oil services companies everywhere. Yes, we have these uh, occasional uh, issues of kidnapping, but it doesn't stop. But we are also strengthening the local security system, the, the, the police force. We are trying to set up a special fund to make sure that uh, we strengthen the police to maintain law and order. In addition to making sure that we provide what the people need and appeal to different uh, groups to see reason why there must be peace, we are also doing what we think is right to increase the, the security because you must secure the area.